Hello, this is Mike, nostressmike.com. And uh, I thought I'd tell you a funny story. Um, I, um, I, I teach counterterrorism. And um, uh, when I was, and it's, you know, I spent a lot of time outside the United States, or at least I used to. And uh, one thing I noticed when I was outside the United States, uh, anything with uh, firearms, uh, people were excited and they want to learn. They want to learn. Uh, and I think the difference is here in the United States, it's our culture. Uh, so we don't even think about it. Uh, if you're interested in, if you're not interested in guns, well, then you're not inter interested in guns. And uh, now in foreign countries, it doesn't matter if you're interested or not, you know, everybody's scared of them. Uh, because like I say, it's, it's not a, it's not in their culture. And then if here, if you're interested in guns, then you're, you know, you're shooting, you've got, got some in your collection, you're, you know, you, you've got an idea on what you want to do. When you watch movies, you can, you think and you're, you're learning stuff. So, you know, that's why it's a little different here in the United States. Outside, uh, that's why I'm able to meet people when I'm out of the country. Uh, and I've, uh, I've had people ask me, well, do you have a gun? The first thing I do is I find out where to get a gun when you're outside the, the country because guns are illegal everywhere but it doesn't matter you can still find them and that's the first thing i do when i come into a country is, is i find a gun normally within hours i know where to find guns uh, most of the time i don't need one when i'm outside the country but sometimes i, I i'll go on and pick one up when i'm there and and uh so i'll I'll have one. Uh, so, in other words, it's easy for me to find people uh, that are interested in uh, not only in guns, but interested in how to use them. Uh, because the stuff that I talk about, uh, you know, like I say, Vietnam veteran, trained SWAT, I've owned businesses. I've had to use my gun a lot in my own businesses. And, you know, I, I don't know. Here in the United States, they don't think that much about it. Outside the United States, they know this guy knows something, and they want to know, well, is there something you can teach us? And so I do classes uh, a lot when I'm outside the country. And uh, when I was living in Guatemala, you know, I had access to a hotel. And uh, it was a big hotel. And one section of it, uh, they only use when it's overflow from the main hotel. So I had access to this, this whole building. And uh, we would do classes, oh, at least once a month. And uh, uh, I would make, uh, I make, well, I make wax bullets to, to train with. And I, I hate to tell you that because people want to try to make wax bullets and they're really dangerous. And there's a certain way you use, you make them. You add Vaseline and that softens them up so then they won't penetrate the skin. It flattens out. It, it'll tear your skin apart or put holes in your clothes. It's really dangerous. And, uh, but the people that want to learn understand it's dangerous. <laughs> I mean, they know danger. That's what guns are all about is danger. So, you know, it's more acceptable. So we would do this in uh, this hotel. And uh, the first part, when we first start doing, the, whenever we do a, a class, we'd start with, uh, you know, putting a gun to somebody's back or in their chest or in their head or you know, and trying to move them, try to uh, make people get in the car, get in this room, go here, go there. You know what I mean? So then they're learning, uh, 
and that's not so much using the gun, but they, they learn what you don't do with a gun uh, because they're going to learn how to counter all these moves. And then uh, uh, we, we move on to, um, we'll do uh, room clearing. How, how do you open the door and go into a room? And uh, we would do that. And uh, because of the hotel, we've got a lot of rooms. And so they have to go in. And now one of the rules we do when we started uh, with uh, we won't uh, do your backup. In other words, uh, when you're going down a hallway and you're going through a room, you always have to have people behind you watching behind so somebody doesn't come in from behind you. We won't come in from behind you because uh, I want everybody to focus more on getting into the room. How do you get into the room? You know, and then after you're in the room, now you got to go to the bathroom. You got to look under the bed and you got to do all this kind of stuff. And so they're learning how to do all this kind of stuff. Then as they move more and more, then we'll be doing the backup. I mean, the whole hallway. You have to watch out that we're going to come up from behind you and stuff like that. So, I mean, we do it in degrees of um, it gets harder and harder each time you do it. And, uh, and then it gets to the point when you've been doing this for quite a bit, and then you're going up against different kinds of guns. And uh, But after a while, it gets that you were trying to come up with all kinds of weird ways of, of doing this stuff, you know, going up and down stairways and, and you know, hallways and just all kinds of stuff like that. It, it starts getting really complicated, and then as you do it more and more, you start understanding it. And uh, the reason I wanted to tell you all this is because I had a really funny story. And that's, uh, I had a, a, one of my students um, was, and in Guatemala you got windy roads. They're two lane, no shoulder, real windy, but it's in the mountains. And so you're going around these mountainous roads. And uh, so then, and all the time there'll be a landslide, and then you have to stop, and then their cars are taking turns getting through and stuff like that. So this guy stopped, you know, he's in all the cars, all the traffic stopped. And so he's waiting, waiting, and finally he gets around the corner, and he can see it's not a landslide. What they're doing is robbing everybody. And so then, uh, so the traffic has stopped already, and now they're robbing people. And so then... So now what he's doing is he's thinking, well, I don't want to get robbed. And uh, so then he started, you know, he turned and back and back and back and back so he can get, get out. That was his idea. And um, so then as he was doing that, they saw him trying to turn around. And then so then they ran up there to him. And when they ran up to him, uh, you know, then they put the gun at him and he's sitting in the car. And uh, he says, okay, you know, give me, your, give me your watch. Gave him the watch. And then he said, give me your wallet. And then, so he reached out and gave, gave him the wallet. And the, right when he gave him the wallet, he also came out and he shot the guy. And then he got out of the car and he shot the other guy. And then the two more were coming up and then he shot them. And then after that, you know, he's thinking, shit, you know. And then... Uh, the other cars that were there said, get, get, go, go, go. And then, so then he left. And then um, uh, come to find out, uh, three died. One of them was still alive. It was one guy with a shotgun, and he was on the other side of the car when he came up. But he got him, but he didn't kill him. And uh, come to find out, uh, they were police and uh, that's why in certain parts of the country, police are known to be the bad guy. You got to remember, they're the ones with the gun. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, who's, who's going to do the crime are normally the ones that have the guns. So who has the guns in countries with no guns? The military and the police. So that's why when you go to stops, you have to watch out 
what you know what's going on you know and uh it, it's just it's kind of it's it's kind of a different situation it's not that easy like um uh, like you know i say like they're gonna rob you you know it's not that easy you come up to a roadblock you know you don't know if they're gonna rob you they just want to check your vehicle why they want to check your vehicle Maybe they want something in it, <laughs> you know. So, you know, I mean, this is why it's that uh, I get a little upset when here in the United States, when police are doing bad things. And I, this is why I get upset when, okay, we know politicians have a different, you know, we're the rule of law. You know, this is what this country run by the rule of law. Well, you understand the politicians don't use that same rule, okay? They could get away with a lot of stuff. Okay, police are doing the same thing. They're getting away, you know, he reached and you shot him because he reached. You know, he could have been reaching for a gun, but he reached. You know, I can't shoot somebody because he was reaching, you know what I mean? Uh, and that's why I say it used to be police were held to higher standards than us normal people. I mean, we don't, what do we know about stuff? And uh, so police are held to a higher standard. Now those standards have come down so much that they're going by a different rules than, uh, uh, than uh, what do you call it? Uh, government officials and, and this type of stuff. You know what I mean? Everybody's got a different laws that they go by. And, you know, this is the stuff that scares me when this happens. That's what, because what happens as the standards lower, we're going to get to the same problem as in Guatemala. Uh, you know, and that's why you hear me talk about morals, taking personal responsibility, the Constitution. These things are important. You need to know and understand them. You don't, down there, they don't have a Constitution. They get robbed all the time. They think that's part of life is getting robbed. You know, what? You got to put your money in your socks, you know, in your shoes. You know, is that the way you want to live your life? That's the way they live their lives down there in constant fear. And, that, and what happens when those people come up here, they're bringing their same nasty ways with them. They're not coming here to raise their standards. The ones that are coming here legally are raising their standards. The ones that don't come here legal, they're bringing their low standards with them, and they expect their low standards here. Now they want to pay the border crossing people. You know, they want to pay the police, you know, I mean, bribing them. You know, I mean, that's, there's a reason for that. And uh, that's why I'm so much against illegals coming in. Illegals are bringing their illegal ways. And then who wants the illegals to come in? The illegal politicians want them to come in. So, you know, it's it's going to bring, and well, like I say, we, you realize by now we are not a civilized country. We are not a moral country. We used to be. Now, some of us uh, still talk morals, and we still live morals, but we know we are surrounded by immoral people. We know that. And then some of us prepare. What are you going to do when you, you're around these immoral people? These are, that's part of preparing. What are you going to do? This is Mike. No stress Mike .com.